Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. We're on our road to 133,000 subscribers, so I would appreciate if you would go ahead and drop a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and let me know your favorite dungeon in Tears of the Kingdom down in the comments below. And let's just get into this video. Now, this is a, a little bit of a, a different video. This is just some thoughts I need to get off my head because we're in the middle of summer. We just got done with our Prime Gaming Fest. If you don't know what that is, that's all right. It's already done and over with. You don't really need to know what it is anymore. We just got past a whole bunch of summer showcases. In fact, while I'm recording this, Microsoft is busy doing an extended summer showcase right now. Good for them. They did this last year as well, and I believe the year before. And yeah, Microsoft has a lot of really cool games to look forward to. But we're a Nintendo channel primarily, right? So while we've been covering all this other stuff over the last week, I haven't made a video, just a normal video, where I talk about my thoughts on Nintendo in the news and report on things in a week. And it's been a long week because, well... Frankly, there really isn't much going on with Nintendo. Now, that doesn't mean there hasn't been some news going on out there, right? We have, what, Prince of Persia, a new Prince of Persia game coming out on Switch coming January 18th. We have Sonic, right, a new Sonic Superstars game coming later this year. We have a handful of other third-party games coming as well. Uh, we could even... Technically, if we wanted to, shoo in talking about Foam Stars, which is sort of a Splatoon inspired multiplayer game by Ubisoft, but not coming to Switch. So, not really all that relevant to my audience. We can also sit here and potentially do an updated thoughts on Tears of the Kingdom video, right? I do have a lot of thoughts about Zelda, and I did survive Prime Gaming Fest without needing to delete my save file, which means I now feel comfortable. Returning to Hyrule, returning to the depths, and continuing my adventure. So that's really good, and that's really exciting. I look forward to grabbing the old Switch here and diving right back into the Tears of the Kingdom. But what's interesting is because Nintendo has nothing planned for after Pikmin 4 announced. Now announced. They, they, they clearly have plans, but nothing announced. It means that Nintendo has left us with very little to talk about, very little to update on. The last time Nintendo gave us any news about their plans was when they announced everybody's 1-2 Switch for the end of this month without any fanfare. No screenshots of the actual game, no video of the game being played, not even a commercial. A still image of a logo with a bunch of people holding phones above their head saying everybody 1-2 Switch is releasing on this day in June June 30th, end of the month. I, I, We're halfway through the month, and we still don't have any footage of what that game is. So even just talking about everybody's 1-2 Switch is difficult to do when Nintendo themselves isn't talking about it, kind of letting you know they don't think the game's going to do well anyways, even at $30. Then we got Pikmin 4. And while they did give us a small little teaser trailer a week or two ago that unveiled, hey, we get to make our own character and venture through the game as our own character to save the rescue crew, to save Olimar. That's cool. That's exciting. And I could obviously create content around Pikmin 4 and drive some hype for it. But it feels weird. Now, we're going to get a Nintendo Direct at some point, And this strange feeling is going to go away. Whether the Direct is this month, whether it's next month, like Jeff Grubb has heard rumors about, or murmurs about, I should say, uh, whether it's never, maybe Nintendo's just going to keep doing Twitter drops, it feels weird, because as someone who owns an Xbox, I think it's up on the TV right now with Madden on it, I know, not the greatest representation of video games there, uh, we have a lot to talk about in regards to Xbox, a lot of games to talk about, even Sony, right? Sony has a lot of games to talk about as well. Even though the two they're pushing right now are Final Fantasy 16 and Spider-Man, you know, the second game, those are two massive games that are constantly getting little trickles of news and updates to talk about from the Sony side of things. Even on PC, we obviously always have things we could talk about on the PC side. But with Nintendo, it's pretty much, here's a couple third-party games, and I guess... What made headlines over the last 24 hours is that Prince of Persia runs at 60 FPS on Switch. It's a side-scroller. If it didn't run at 60 FPS, 
I would be wondering if those developers even know how to develop for Switch. So shout out to Ubisoft for that, but I don't really know how that's a headline. It should run at 60 FPS on Switch. We're not talking about some crazy game here, although I am excited for it. It's not something that you would think would be pushing the boundaries of Switch. Look at Tears of the Kingdom, then look at that game. Yeah, it should run at 60 FPS. But it's interesting to me thinking about how Nintendo has approached this summer. They have allowed themselves, after Tears of the Kingdom came out, because we're a little over a month since Tears of the Kingdom released, they have allowed themselves to let others overshadow them. I find that to be interesting because Nintendo usually doesn't like to do that. They don't like to be the forgotten platform. And while Tears of the Kingdom is still selling incredibly well, it only recently got knocked off the uh, number one spot in the UK. Diablo 4 last week overtook Tears of the Kingdom, but its launch was actually smaller than Tears of the Kingdom. So who knows? Maybe Tears of the Kingdom pops back up to number one next week. The point is that Nintendo is sort of resting. And I don't like when Nintendo rests on success. I like when they grab the reins and they just keep getting it going. Get get the gallop going. Keep the horse sprinting forward. And right now, they seem to be not doing that. Now, there is one logical reason I could think on why they might be taking this approach. Can anyone guess what that reason is? They're preparing to launch new hardware. And maybe that's why it feels strange. Because maybe they're preparing to launch new hardware this holiday. And so we need this little strange period where we don't know what's after Pikmin 4. And Nintendo's apparently doing Gamescom and this Nintendo. Like Nintendo's planning big events for later in this year without us having any big things to look forward to at the moment. So maybe that is what Nintendo's been gearing up to this whole time. And they just aren't talking because they haven't unveiled it yet. They want to keep the secret as long as they can. Also, Nintendo might not be doing any of that, and they're just being weird. Nintendo is a strange company. They're under new leadership, and Doug Bowser here in the U.S. after Reggie fils retired. Obviously, we know that Furukawa took over in Japan. And in the end, this is just uncharted territory. Year 7 of a platform. Still trying to sell it. Massive success in Tears of the Kingdom. Now what? <laughs> and that that's really what a lot of us feel. Now what? Oh, Metroid Prime 4. Sure. That's coming someday. But is that it? What, what about Mario? Having had a new Mario in almost six years. And I'm talking the mainline games. We haven't had, I don't know. How about a Luigi's Mansion after what that pulled off in 2019? Such an amazing game. What about more new IPs? What about old IPs coming back? What about, I don't know, GameCube on NSO? Is that even a pipe dream? The point is, there's a lot Nintendo could be talking about, and they're not going to, at least for now. And the next Direct is going to alleviate a lot of this stress, whether it's about new hardware or just dropping a boatload of games. It's time for Nintendo to load the cannon and unleash fury. So until then, we're sort of left in this situation where myself as a content creator, as someone who covers news, is just sort of left twiddling our thumbs, waiting on that next big thing. I'm okay with that, by the way. I'll come up with things to make videos on. That's not going to be a problem. But I got to admit, it feels a little strange right now watching everyone else puff their chest as we patiently wait. And you know what? At least I got a little uh, Tears of the Kingdom to tie me over until Nintendo decides to tell me what they want to do next. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Rumpeljance, and I'll catch you in that next video.